Maybe I needed a case, maybe I didn't. The boys downtown had been asking after me. That was the word on the street. I was thinking it'd be nice to get out of the office when all of a sudden a customer stumbled in. Some might say she was glamorous. Maybe it was the dress that was glamorous and she just happened to be the girl in it. I couldn't take my eyes off the shoes. I need some shoes. If I was a man, I guess I'd have tried to be charming, failed, and taken the case to impress her. I'm not a man, I took it anyway. She gave me a photo and a packet of matches. I gave her an understanding look, did a bit of research, and got out of there as quickly as possible. It was the usual. She had gotten married. People do that sometimes. People crash cars every now and then as well. The husband had mentioned divorce. She was devastated. I'd follow him around for a day or two, see what he was up to, and cash the check. I needed a cosmopolitan. A girl's drink, but hey, I'm a girl. Getting my purse out of my handbag to pay for it seemed like a hell of a lot of trouble, so I resorted to plan A. I asked around. I picked up a few leads and several unattractive men. Then Fat Tony turned up. Fat Tony runs this town. Fat Tony isn't actually fat. He had been, but Fitness First had taken care of that, and now he needed a new name. Fat Tony thought he was pretty smooth. He always wore a white rose and was followed around by two goons. I liked the rose better. Fat Tony invited me over for a drink. He wanted to know about his case. I said, what case? He said the case the boys downtown had been putting together. He'd heard my name was involved. I said I didn't know nothing. Fat Tony said he was a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. But I didn't say nothing. I woke up in the gutter. I'd been in hotels that were worse, but at least they had mini bars, And they didn't have free wake-up calls from Gus McKee. Yeah, the nosiest reporter in town. He was after a story. He asked me about Fat Tony. He told me the boys downtown were closing in on the rackets in Chinatown. He said heads were going to roll. He said they had their knickers in a knot about the Karen Pritchard case. Yeah, Karen Pritchard. Fat Tony's girl. She danced and sang and acted. But the only thing she could do well was, well, I'll let you use your imagination. You see, a while back, Fat Tony thought she'd been cheating on him and thought he knew who with. She came to me. She was scared. Then she was gone. The boys downtown found her. She'd never been more beautiful. She was holding a white rose, Fat Tony's trademark. They still couldn't pin it on him, though, so they brought me in. I smoked. They smoked. There was a lot of smoke and a lot of questions. They asked me about Fat Tony. They asked me about Karen. All I know is she came to me for help and she didn't get it and it didn't look good around town. That's when I realized Fat Tony had taken the picture. I couldn't have blamed him. You see, Karen had confessed to me that she was in love. Guess who win? It all connected. If he was interested in my case, my client was in it up to her neck. I had to look out for her, like I should have looked out for Karen. I needed a lead. I needed to know more. Gus was nice enough to fill me in on the details. He told me the boys downtown were interested in a bookie named Chow, Fat Tony's right-hand man, who had a restaurant in Chinatown. I felt like some spring rolls all of a sudden. Fattening, I know, but I'd skipped lunch again. I always wondered what was in them, but that wasn't a case for a two-bit operation like mine. Hell, maybe the clowns in the police force could look into it. They didn't seem to have anything better to do. Detective Sergeant Smith. An exciting name for an exciting man. You remember the Karen Pitchard case, little lady? Client of yours, wasn't she? Sloppy work. Very sloppy. He said they were closing in on Fat Tony. He said only one person knew where Fat Tony kept his records, and that was Karen. He said the only person who Karen would have talked to was me. All he had to do was pick up the bookie, and Fat Tony would know the game was up. And he said all that with his mouth open, when he should have been on the lookout for the bookie, and that man behind him holding that gun, and then... There he was. There she was. She? The she my client had been having nightmares about while she did his laundry. I had to admit they looked good together. She was in his arms. They saw only each other. I saw only them. It was chaos, what with people being shot and the like, but I got a shot of the happy couple for the unhappy wife. It might have been art if I could find someone to pay a million dollars for it, but I couldn't, so I just grabbed the film and ran. Fat Tony was getting rid of loose ends. The boys downtown were closing in fast. I should have skipped town right away, but the girl kind of reminded me of Karen. Yeah, Karen. I could feel her right behind me, spurring me on. Karen and me, maybe we had a plan on how to get us and the girl out of this crazy mess. I'd had a run-in with the law and a run-in with Fat Tony, and now I had to just give her the news that maybe the husband wasn't the cat she thought he was. I couldn't help wondering how she'd take it. Some saps get all beaten up by that sort of thing. 
but not her. Well, not this time, anyway. I know, you see. Because I'd just have to take off my coat and take off my hat and right underneath there she'd be, with a pretty dress on, waiting for him to open the front door of his pretty home. You can forget about crime and you can forget about murder. This isn't either. You see, it's just that like I told Karen, I don't approve of divorce. <laughs> 